Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Today we're just going to talk about standard operation with Jack and Jack stands. So you've got your handle, and this is going to be a jack, and this is your lifting point. That will be sitting up against the vehicle when you are raising it. What you want to do to raise the vehicle is to make sure that your handle is turned tight clockwise. It doesn't have to be crazy tight, just tight enough so that the jack has enough hydraulic pressure not to go down under load. Once your jack handle is turned clockwise enough, so it doesn't turn anymore, when the handle goes down, the jack goes up, that will raise the vehicle, just like shown. I would highly advise slowly pumping the handle to raise the vehicle, just to make sure you are aware of your surrounding. And when you're done, you want to turn it counterclockwise. Again, slowly lower the jack back to its original position when it's flat against the floor. And then, of course, you got your jack stands right here. This secured the vehicle with a simple mechanical operation, unlike using a hydraulic jack. My jack stand of choice has a safety pin to secure its height. I'll just pull the safety pin out, just like that, and then raise the jack stand, put the safety pin back in to secure the desired height. If you don't need to work underneath the vehicle, let's say when you're performing a brake job, I will jack the vehicle up with the hydraulic jack and then slide the jack stands under the side lifting point. Lower your jack to have the car seated on the jack stands and finally to raise the jack at the center jacking point once again. Just slightly touching the jacking point to act as a fail safe just in case if your jack stands go wrong for whatever reason. I think it's also worth noting that it's important to use jack and jack stands hand in hand. You should never rely on hydraulic jack alone to raise the vehicle, especially if you need to go underneath the car. Safety should always be your priority whenever you're working on cars or anything else. Let's start with the rear since I have the vehicle parked reverse into the garage. We're going to use our rear differential as our lifting point. If your car is a rear wheel drive, you're going to have a rear differential. If it's all wheel drive, you'll also have a rear differential. If your car is front wheel drive, however, you should have some kind of frame or a cross member at the rear end still is going to be able to hold the vehicle's weight as your lifting point. Since we're going to lift the rear end, we're going to chalk off the front wheel to prevent any rollback. In this case, it's going to be rolling out of my garage. For most BMWs and even most European vehicles, you'll have a designated lifting points from the factory. So this is your rear wheel and this is your designated lifting point. Normally, you will put a jack pad adapter onto your jack stand to raise the vehicle against the frame. But as you can see, I have my jack pad adapter already screwed into the lifting point. So in this case, I'll only have to slide my jack stand over while I'm aiming for the lifting point when I'm lowering the vehicle. Just like that. I just got these spare ones. And these are the plastic piece that sit against your vehicle frame. And this is what I was talking about, uh, using a jack pad adapter to fit underneath while you're using a jack stand, even a jack on these factory lifting point. Okay. 
let's change the angle so you have a better view to see what's going on where the where the lifting point i was actually talking about i have the jack lifting right under the rear differential casing and to avoid the rear diff cover so it doesn't split into two and something that's also worth noting you may have to reposition your jack and jack stands multiple times this directly relates to your safety so just reposition as many times as you need to now let's talk about how to lift the front end you will just look for some type of front cross member that has a flat bottom in my application with my bmw m340i x drive there is a designated center jacking point that the factory indicates to use which i'll show you in a bit and just like before you want to make sure you are using some sort of wheel chocks like these to chalk off the rear wheel this time to avoid any rollback when you're lifting the front end and for the next step we're just going to slide our jack right underneath the center lifting point Unfortunately, I can't really see where the center lifting point with the current right height will have to be creative here. You can either drive the car on ramps or some type of 2x4s, but in my case, I'm just going to use a scissor jack that I got some time ago to slightly raise one of the sides in the front so I can see better underneath at the center lifting point. And that should be enough. We're just going to position our jack to the center lifting point. Let's change the angle once again so that you have a better view of what's going on underneath. I'm not really sure if this is standard only on the X Drive models with the G20 chassis, but for my car, there is an indented circle to tell you that this is your center front lifting point. Once you've raised the vehicle high enough, slide your jack stands under the side lifting points at both sides, and then you'll lower your jack to have the car seated on the stands. Once again, make sure you use jack and jack stands together, not just your jack alone. They're not safe enough for you to go underneath the car. Let's take a different approach on how we're going to jack up the front end when we already have jacked up the rear end to fit all fours on jack stands. When you go underneath the front bumper, you see basically this is only going to be two fists, a very tight tolerance space to fit our trolley jack underneath, which is not exactly ideal. We're going to take a different approach on where are we going to fit the jack. Mind you that I have already jacked up the rear end via the rear differential and that's why I have a really tight tolerance and the front bumper to fit my jack underneath. That's why we're going to take this angle of approach in here because we have more of a tolerance space to fit our jack by this angle since our rear end is already raised up. And then we're just going to fit the jack just as if we are jacking up from the front end by the front bumper at the center lifting point, which I'll show you in a bit as well. And that's it for this video, relatively short one to showcase how to use jack and jack stands together to lift the front end and rear end of your vehicle. Alternatively, you can use stacks of 2x4s to lift the vehicles 8 to 10 inch off the ground if you don't need the wheels off. I hope you enjoyed the video and have learned how to operate jack and jack stands. 
as well to know more about the BMW G20 chassis if you have one about its lifting points. If this was helpful to you, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing as I'll have more content about working on my Beamer. That's it for now and catch you in the next one. Cheers.